invite you to turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 11. We're not going to file a chapter 11, we're going to turn to chapter 11. So. <laughs> I'm going to read verses 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Well, as we go through the attitudes, we come, we come across a short one that simply says, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. I personally wish Jesus would have elaborated on this a whole lot more. Tell me more, Jesus. Tell us more. Meekness is not one of the virtues that is highly valued in our society. Not really sure if it ever was. It's become so much of an oddity that we very seldom even use the word anymore. If you went to the average Joe on the street and say, can you define the word meek for me? I seriously doubt very many people would even be able to do that. They may be able to guess because it, it kind of sounds like a kind of a softer, gentler kind of word. But it, but it wouldn't be because they were dumb, but because it, it's a little used word. And it's an underappreciated virtue. I, I Googled um, meek the other day. Google's online dictionary defines the word meek this way quiet, gentle, and easily imposed on or submissive. Those generally aren't the groups of people you associate with those who are in position to be in charge here on earth. <laughs> those people who want to rule the world are far more outspoken. They tend to be very loud, not gentle. Activists here consider, would never consider submitting to anyone. They would rather see everyone submitting to them. How do they make the world? How do they make the world a better place? They demand that we listen to them, and if we don't, they pass laws that say we have to listen to them. That doesn't sound very meek to me. Meekness doesn't sound like a trait that's going to get you very far in the world we live in today. Yet it's Jesus who says, "Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit." The earth. Now, the passage I read earlier from Matthew 11, we see Jesus again in sermon mode. In sermon mode. And if you really look at the entire Gospel of Matthew, Jesus preaches five big sermons in Matthew. This is the second one. The Sermon on the Mount, the first one, this is the second one. <clears throat> and and he's, um, he says the Lord, he praises his Father in heaven and in and earth because he's hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the little children. There are things in this life you can't get a hold of by being a go-getter. You know, the world tells us to get a day go-getter, you gotta do this. In Jesus' day, children were not highly valued. They just weren't. It was good to have them, but they were second-class citizens when they became adults. That's why it was such a big deal when they became adults. Then they found their place. So the fact that God has chosen to reveal these things to little children and not to the wise and learned it teaches us two things. One, that God is the dispenser of wisdom. And two, he wants us to be like children. Not to behave like children, but to consider ourselves unworthy. And he's going to reveal things to us that he's not going to reveal to other people. I used to wonder, like, God, why aren't you telling the smart people this? No, I really he tells, he tells He tells us kind of people. Us kind of people, that's it. <laughs> the words always come out right, but you know what I mean. These are the kinds of people God seems most likely to reveal himself to. Simpletons, children, not those people who think that they're all that, but wise and learning. In verse 26, he says, yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. God loves to reveal himself to people. But it's not so that they can feel important about themselves and pop themselves up. It's so that the message of salvation can be spread all over the world. God wants to reveal himself to everybody. But he wants you to realize just how unworthy you are of anything. And that's when he's most likely to reveal himself to you. You know, um, he, he's, Jesus doesn't need more self-absorbed, arrogant blowhards, does he? He needs more people willing to be like him. It's Jesus we should seek to emulate. Always. 
always. Not, not, not these people, not the big shots we see on TV, not sports figures, not big personalities and the like. We need to see people more like Jesus. That's easier said than done. It says in verse 27, All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, those who, to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. You see, there's a depth of knowledge. There, there are some things that we know. There are some things that we will never know until God, or unless God reveals them to us. God knows, the Father knows the Son, the Son knows the Father in such a way that they are one. And God chooses to reveal himself to whoever he chooses to reveal himself. We need to put ourselves in position to receive that. And he calls us, that's why he calls us his children. We seek no way but Jesus. When we are the ones who are to come to him with wide eyes, wonder, and awe. I stand, for that song go, I stand, I stand in awe of you. Not because we're stupid. We're not stupid, but because we know all we need to know is Jesus. That's why he says in verse 28, come to me, oh, who are weary and burdened. I'm not sure if you're feeling weary and burdened this morning. I'm probably more weary than burdened. But if you are, you came to the right place. You came to meet Jesus. Now, you can meet Jesus anywhere. You came to meet Jesus because he's the only one to do anything about it. He says at the end of the sentence, and I will give you rest. And all I can say to that is, oh, a whole bunch more ages. You know, that just sounds good, doesn't it? Jesus can give us that rest that we so absolutely need. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. We must learn from Jesus. He tells us later that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Our yokes often seem difficult and heavy. We often don't know what to do, but Jesus tells us to come to him and learn from him. So you know what? That's what we do. But what is it about him that we should learn? He goes on to say, I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Easy and light sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds real good. The road we get is often frantic and crazy, and if you aren't just as frantic and crazy as the rest of them, you may appear to them lazy and unconcerned. That's how they view people who aren't going nuts, just like they are. Well, Jesus is hard and lazy and unconcerned. He's not lazy. He's not unconcerned. He's just got the whole world in his hands. You know, and, 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 and we should feel better about that. He's gentle. Some translations there say meek. It's the same word when he says, blessed are those who meek. Gentle, meek, and humble in heart. Jesus constantly shows us his meekness, and he wants the same from us. Remember earlier the definition of meek is quiet, gentle, easily imposed on, easily imposed on, or submissive. Those aren't easy traits to demonstrate. It's hard to be quiet when the world around us is so loud. Because if you don't speak up, you're not going to get hurt. You might get stepped on. It's hard to be gentle in the midst of all the roughness. It's hard to, really hard to allow yourself to be easily imposed on. So I found that the better you get at that, the more people want to impose on you. The more you do, the more they want you to do. Right, Deb? <laughs> I kind of go to daily conversation about that. Just, 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 I mean, just, uh, just to give Deb some props here. If you see Deb's name at the school, you used to have about 15 slashes. Because she was this, slash this, slash this, slash this, slash this. It's like, what exactly do you do? It's like, a whole bunch of different stuff. The more you do, the more they will impose on you. And I found that the better you get at, the more they get this what you do. It can't be enough to make, that can be enough to make you put up barriers and say, you know what, no more, I ain't talking to anybody. No one's taking advantage of me anymore. No one's going to ever impose on me ever again. But the call is to be me. Quiet, gentle, easily imposed on, and submissive. I know we can all share stories of how we've been burned by being that way. Have you ever been down to a cross for everybody else's problems? You may have felt that way. You've never been nailed to a cross because of everybody else's problems. That would have really irritated me. I wouldn't have made a good Jesus. <laughs> I'm just, which is good because I'm not, and that's okay. He's even better at it than I am. You know, as believers, we put ourselves out there, and Jesus calls us to be meek. In fact, he says, blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And the more I thought about that sentence, I started getting stuck on the words, inherit the earth. 
It's amazing how many people want to control what happens here on earth. They want power. They want control of this place as though we're capable of controlling this place. But people go through great lengths to dictate and regulate what happens to the earth or on the earth. But Jesus speaks to the contrary. It isn't the powerful that will inherit the earth. It's the meek who will inherit the earth. And did you notice? It comes in the form of inheritance. You can't take over, which means something or someone has to die. You know how inheritance works? Somebody has to die. And whatever they've got left, you inherit. That can be good and bad. You know, as you've all probably experienced. You can either inherit a lot of money or a house full of junk. <laughs> or both. And so uh, maybe you can turn one into the other. But inheritance only takes effect when there's a death. Something, somebody, something has to die in order for there to be an inheritance. And I said this once before, and I'll say it again. The earth, as we know it, is passing away. It's passing away. Jesus speaks in Revelation about a new heaven and a new earth. And I'd be lying if I told you I knew exactly what that was going to look like. But somehow, some way, there's going to be a new open earth. It's going to, I don't know if it's going to look different or not, but it's going to be new. You know, somehow he's going to fix all that's wrong with this place and fully restore the creation the way it was meant to be. The earth as we know is going to pass away and the new earth will be inherited by, you guessed it, only those who are meek. Only those who decide to follow Jesus and live like Jesus, being meek, humble, gentle, willing to be imposed upon, to be part of that new kingdom that inherits the earth. You know, it might be a dog-eat-dog -dog world full of cutthroat people jockeying for position, but that's not how it works in the kingdom of God. It, it, it's a little different. And Jesus tried to show us that. He even died on the cross to show us that. So we can inherit the earth. <sighs> Inheritance is kind of a double-edged sword, isn't it? You, you, on one hand, you want it, but you don't want anybody to have to die. And so, it's one of those, I don't know. But Jesus says in Matthew 5, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. So let's, uh, doesn't always feel good, doesn't always feel right. We got to try to be meek, don't we? And we got to, and uh, that's uh, not going to lie. Given the option, Sometimes I'd rather let somebody have it, <laughs> to be me. That's just me. And so, uh, but then something else God just showed me that meekness doesn't equal weakness. That was pretty clever, wasn't it? I just came up with that just now. And so, uh, meekness doesn't equal weakness. But it means being willing to put yourself in that position and say, yeah, go ahead. Take advantage of me now. But you know what? We don't inherit the earth. And so, um, so do what you have to do. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this call. We, meet, we thank you for how you said you are me. Lord, and nah, let's cast our burdens upon you, Lord, because in, in your meekness you took it to the cross. Lord, and in your meekness you rose from the grave, and in your meekness you conquered the world, the world that thought they could kill you, the world that thinks that they can kill us and boss us around and push us around and, and do whatever they want to do us. Lord, you said, blessed are the me. Lord, we want to be blessed. And forgive us for those times that we don't always want to be meek. But Lord, help us to find that place, Lord, and to, and to find a place where we can indeed be like you. Lord, because uh, you're not asking us to do anything that you haven't done. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. Fill us with your meekness. But, uh, Lord, when the, just the, the one day, one glorious day, Lord, we will be with you. And, and Lord, this place will be, this, we will inherit this place as, uh, in, in, in a renewed fashion in your name. Amen.